NASA scientists are starting to finalize the robotic machines they'll need to pull off a series of extremely complex maneuvers on Mars. Here are the details. NASA revealed on Tuesday, December 14th that it's already testing the complex set of hardware that would be required to bring back sample tubes from Mars. The first part of the Mars side of the mission would be a lander that can support the mission's heavy rover, robotic arm, rocket, and rocket tosser. This lander would be too heavy for retrojets, so it would require piston-powered legs to absorb a lot of shock when landing. The rover would then have to be smart enough to find and pick up all the sample tubes that previous rovers left at various spots on their trail. After that, the rover needs to find the lander, where a robotic arm will place the samples inside the rocket that will blast them into space. The rocket itself will need to adapt to any uneven terrain that the lander might have landed on, so it comes with a tossing mechanism that will toss it nose up into the air just before the rocket fires. Up in Mars' orbit, an orbiter would use complex mechanics to seal the tubes in clean containers, then sterilizing the seals and placing the containers into an Earth entry capsule before the return trip to Earth. The NASA team has conducted 23 tests this year, changing the rocket's mass and center of gravity along the way. The science behind Dune, one of the biggest movies this year, is being poured over by fans. But could it be applied in real life? Here's what you need to know. The success of the new Dune movie has people speculating about whether humans changing Mars' surface and atmosphere to be more like Earth's, known as terraforming, is possible, and according to the BBC, the primary issue is creating a breathable atmosphere to match Earth's, where currently plants and bacteria give out oxygen through photosynthesis. For Earth, large-scale oxygenation initially occurred 2.3 billion years ago when bacteria began releasing oxygen as waste, according to the Nature Communications Journal. But the BBC explains the difficulty in artificially introducing bacteria to do the same on Mars is that water which could be used for photosynthesis is currently frozen. One solution to that problem could be building automated factories on Mars that produce greenhouse gases which warm up the planet and melt the ice. However, any additional atmosphere that was generated would still have to deal with an additional problem called spallation, where high-energy radiation from the sun blasts away a planet's atmosphere, a process which already afflicted Mars 3.5 billion years ago. One researcher who spoke to the BBC suggested that once an active biosphere is established on Mars, oxygen production may be able to match losses from spallation. But in 2017, NASA scientists at NASA's Planetary Science Vision 2050 workshop suggested creating an artificial magnetic field that sits in front of the planet in order to protect it from the sun's radiation. The idea is that a structure that generates a magnetic dipole field at the Mars L1 Lagrange point could allow the Martian atmosphere to become thick enough to melt ice at Mars's northern pole and, in time, spark a greenhouse gas effect that could restore some of Mars's oceans. Once a viable, breathable atmosphere is theoretically possible, a much broader range of issues and possible solutions come into play. First, there is the issue of how to get either humans or human stuff up there. Here, in the simplest sense, timing is everything. Once every 26 months, Mars gets close to Earth to create conditions optimal for travel to the Martian surface, that is, using the least amount of energy and the shortest transit time, and this is obviously when it makes most sense to attempt to send anything out there. The surface of Mars is bone dry and seemingly devoid of life, but experts have long speculated that life could exist on Mars in water under the surface. In 2018, they found evidence of one lake at the Martian South Pole. Now, a new study has found an entire cluster of lakes. Here is what they discovered. Scientists have found a network of salty liquid water lakes on Mars beneath the planet's South Pole, according to new research published Monday in the journal Nature Astronomy. An international team examined radar data from MARSIS, short for Mars Advanced Radar for Subsurface and Ionosphere Sounding. This instrument on the Mars Express orbiter bounces radio waves off the surface and it measures their echoes to image geological structures. Two years ago, these investigations revealed a subglacial lake 1.5 kilometers below the surface. The lake is in a region called Uhimi Scopoli near the red planet's south pole and measures about 20 kilometers across. Further investigations and analysis of new data from Mars Express have found three additional salty lakes, each a few kilometers wide. Because Mars lacks a substantial atmosphere, the resulting low pressure on the planet's surface makes it impossible for liquid water to form. But the planet had seas and lakes billions of years ago, and liquid water could still exist under the surface. 
This water would likely be saturated with salts, which would keep it liquid at temperatures as low as 150 degrees Kelvin. Life exists in subglacial lakes on Earth, like Lake Vostok in Antarctica, so these Martian lakes could harbor remnants of life that evolved when the planet had a more hospitable climate and liquid water on the surface. This new study comes just a few weeks after scientists reported finding potential signs of life in the clouds of Venus. After a perfect touchdown via a self-destructing rocket cradle, NASA's newest rover is set to start doing some amazing things on Mars. Here are the details. The BBC reports that the first task of NASA's Perseverance rover on Mars is to send back data so technicians can check to see if any systems were damaged during its rough journey. After that, the rover's mast must be raised. Then, the software that got the vehicle to Mars must be exchanged for software that enables the robot to drive across its surface. Perseverance's next step would be to take many pictures over the next week as scientists seek to assess the nature of the nearby terrain. One near-term objective will be to run a helicopter experiment. Perseverance carried with it a mini-chopper that will attempt to make the first powered flight in another world. Only after this will the robot get on with the serious business of its mission. It will head to the vast delta feature that scientists want to analyze. Deltas are built by rivers as they push out into a wider body of water and dump their sediment. Scientists are hoping that, trapped in the material that built this delta, are the telltale signatures of past biology. The rover will sample the sediment and test it for signs of alien life. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.